grateful to be with you this morning, to see all of your wonderful faces, or your eyes. <laughs> we are here to worship the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are here for you. And so we lift our eyes to you in this place. You are holy. You are worthy. Have your glory right now in this hour. Have your glory, Lord. You make all things new, and we thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Shame could not get past my blame till he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me. Darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me. See, I now a new creation in Christ. The old.
Hi, church family. Hey, everybody. We are here. We're here a little under six months, and we are here. Why? Because our amazing, amazing, amazing family yeah. um, that you guys are, uh, Pastor, Mrs. Pastor, <laughs> Jamie, Mrs. Jamie, <laughs> I just want to thank you guys because when stuff went down, when the enemy tried to stop us, you guys, mm -hmm. all of you, had our back. And all of you gave us the best sending off ever to get here. And guys, we're here. Integrate and see right there, that is a mosque in all its glory. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. And they're all over the place. And every hour or so, you hear that call to prayer. And what do we do? We pray. We pray and over we pray. this country. And we've been good. Um, so many of you don't know my African name, Malik Keita. My African name is Ami Sagara. So we've been here a little over, a little under six months, forgive me. Um, it seems longer, I guess, maybe because we're in hot season now. We've been focused primarily on language acquisition and cultural acquisition, two major things. And we've shared that with you guys when we were there. We cannot win anyone to Christ. We cannot share the gospel if we do not speak their heart language and if we are being culturally insensitive or even insulting. So that has been our main focus. Um, we are in the capital city still. We will be heading to the village. We will be off the grid. It's just taking time as it seems like everything here takes a lot longer than you expect. Um, our houses are being built in the village as we speak. But even here in the capital city, we've had amazing ministry opportunities. We've been able to minister and share Isa al Masia, Jesus the Messiah, with our language teachers, with our neighbors, with friends in the neighborhood, with our friends in the market. And we are just being very intentional in winning them to ourselves so that we can win them for Christ. We are taking time to, to just spend with each and every one of them, to love on them so that they can look at us and go, there's something different about you. Yeah. And I want to know what it is. And language has been hard, um, especially for me. You know, um, I'm not a learned man, but you know, the language has been hard. And we got to pray with one of our language teachers, mom and God just showed up and then my language just got better phrases it just stepped in it stepped up it just flowed and everywhere we go we're intentional about is God's presence with us um, Lane from New Song he always used this quote and I use it all the time I love it um, he said people don't understand because they're under the influence mm -hmm. what is that influence the Holy Spirit so when we pray for these families sometimes um, their reactions of I don't know what I just felt but I, I liked it, mm -hmm. but they don't ask questions yet. And I say yet because, remember, it takes time. And right now, guys, we are building relationships with language. We are building relationships with culture. We are building relationships with our friends out here on the road that we're walking. So when you guys pray for us, just pray for, for, for strength, for guidance, um, and just, just a clarity of mind that, that we get the language a lot better because eventually they ask, why are you here? You have all this money. You have all, you are the white you people. You could be in America. You could be in America doing this. And what we've been trying to say, Tammy explained it well to our teacher, but what we want people to say is they're like, oh, you have all this money. You have all this wadi. And we're going, no, you realize that um, our churches and our family, they send us here every month. It's their money that's keeping us here. So we are here to be with the people, learn the language, learn the culture and work with the kids. And that is what we want to say when they ask us why we are here. Because once our friends understand that, then they know, wait, that's how our culture is. When our kid wants to go to like a trade school or wants mm -hmm. to go to learning to drive something, the family gets together and they put over the money so the kid can do that. And it's for us, it's been going really good, but we want to let them know that, you know, hey, we're doing the same thing. You know, so language has been good. Culture's been good with Tammy. She's been awesome. Um, we miss you guys. Yeah, we really do. We talk about, you know, the question comes up, well, where are you guys from? And we've decided, well, we're from Elk Grove yeah. because you guys are our home church. And there's so many of you that have partnered with us and so many of you that are praying for us. And first of all, we want to say thank you. Love you guys. Thank you so much. We love you. As you continue to pray for us, let me just share a couple prayer requests with you guys. We do say just West Africa. A lot of you know exactly where we are, but it's just West Africa because that's for security purposes. And security does continue to be an issue. So please Al keep it Al-Qaeda, careful. <laughs> um, we are two of 12 on our team. We have a whole team here, so pray for our team. 
Like I said earlier in this video, our houses are being built in the village. Pray that that gets completed. But most importantly, please, please, please be in prayer that the presence of the Lord goes with us everywhere, that the people that we are now ministering to and the people that we will minister to in the village yeah. will fear, feel his presence and that in Jesus' name they will come to a saving knowledge of him because that's why we're here. Yeah. And remember, guys, um, Pastor will share with you guys. Cousin Mark is sensitive. Um, he'll share with you the Facebook page that you guys can follow. Um, many of you are already in many there, of you but are, if you're but, not... Um, what we try and do is we just share videos and stories um, throughout the day on our Sundays and on our, our week. And if we find some really cool pictures and stuff, sorry. <coughs> um, you guys can follow the journey with us. Not just these videos that we send out here and there. But you guys follow this journey with us because you, some of you are. Now let's let everybody get on board, right? All right, Pastor. We're waiting for you to send more people to West Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and Hopefully those who are thinking about it. Hopefully a whole bunch of you will yes. come to visit us. Yes, you can come visit. What we mean by visit is you come and work <laughs> and enjoy the hot, hot heat. It has been 104 all week and gross and muggy. And this is what suffering for Isa Amasia is, I guess. But it has been awesome, guys. We are here. And, you know, our Heavenly Father is doing some yes. some great work here. Yeah. And it's 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 doni doni. It's, it's little, little. little. little and it takes time and guys i think we're going to do that in this time frame keep us in prayer keep us in prayer malik keta ami sagara malik ami keep us in prayer our african names we love you guys so much we love you Pastor, so much we love you jamie we love you and everyone else we forget your names we are so sorry i didn't forget them he did he, yeah me so <laughs> haki labora i forgot all right um i love you guys so much pray 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 for not us but pray for the heart of Africa and the people here and our team. We love you guys so much and thank you for everything. Isa al Masia Kaheradi. May Jesus give you peace. Shaking off the dust as we arise Awake, awake, our generation cries Salvation song will ring throughout the earth And every eye will see your matchless word Feel the drum of your heart.
same time With scars that prove that he cannot be stopped Thank you, Jesus And history was changed upon the cross With victory a rescue of its lost And silence will be broken a yes in your heart will you stand up today as we prepare for the word let's sing this together there's a yes in my heart god for what you want of me there's a yes in my heart to give and to go and to be used here at home use me lord use me lord in my home in my family in my circle in my community in my world use me lord good news is that Jesus is alive. Amen. Lord, and because of that, we have abundant hope. Lord, I pray that that hope would fill our hearts, Lord God, as we, as we do more for your kingdom. Lord, we love you so much and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you all for being here. I'm telling you, as we kind of get back to to normal, it is really good to see a full church. Amen. It's, uh, oh man, it does my heart good, I'll tell you that. Sweet. Well, pastor's not here. He just left. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, 
We're, we're finishing the series of why. The first week, Pastor talked about why Jesus, and then it was why church, why me was last week, and then this week, we're closing up with why storms. Before I do that, I do, uh, I see Daniel and Dominic Gunnarsson back there. Uh, they're, uh, we're, they were in North Carolina for a while, and then now they're moved to Washington. Daniel's in the military. Uh, Dominic is the daughter of the house, and so we just want to thank you guys for for your service and, and for being here this morning. You guys are awesome. I hope I was, that's allowed to be disclosed on the internet because if not, oh, my bad. And then also someone very, very near and dear to my heart. I've known this uh, young woman since she was two years old um, and her mom and, uh, and Mike. Uh, so Tara, Mike, and then Miranda, if you would just wave at everyone. Actually, Miranda, I'm going to put you on blast. I'm sorry, I'm going to have you stand up. Um, Miranda is recently married and her husband Malachi is... Um, is, is, is in our armed forces as well, and he is, um, he is currently deployed. And so I'd like to pray for you guys, if that's okay. So if you guys would just stretch your hand. Uh, Father, we thank you for Malachi and for Miranda, Lord, the Hodge family, Lord, right now. We just pray, um, Lord, that you would be everything that they need you to be in this time, Lord God, and, and, and that you would keep him safe, Lord God, him and his unit. Lord, we, we pray for our military, God, that, that there would be a special hedge of protection around them. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to guard their hearts during this time, Lord, for, for, for Miranda, for Malachi, Lord God, I pray that, that there would even be more bricks laid to their foundation during this time, Lord God. Um, Lord, that they would um, hear the, the, the secrets of your heart. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for the destiny that's on their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. So, storms. You know, in the natural, I love storms. Like, I love tornadoes. Tornadoes absolutely fascinate me. Anyone else? Yeah, a little bit? Okay. Okay. Um, someone said no real loud. Um, tornadoes fascinate me. And I, I know I talk to people from the Midwest sometimes, like, yeah, they're fascinating until you're caught in one. I, that, I know, obviously, right? Um, so storms are amazing. I love tornadoes. And when I was in junior high, I wanted to be a storm chaser. Like, that was a real life goal for me in junior high. Except I figured out that California doesn't have tornadoes. And I don't want to leave California. So I'm like, oh, okay, there goes that dream. So I chose to be a pastor instead, which is basically the same thing. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> and then that movie Twister came out. Anyone remember Twister? What's the most rememberable, memorable scene from that movie? The cows, 100%. Like, you might not remember any part of the movie. I don't remember how it ends. I just remember the cows. Like, there was a cow that flew across your screen, and then they all looked this way. And then it was either the same cow or a different cow went this way. I wasn't sure. And they went all this way. Then someone said, we have cows. Um, so, it, like, that was the most memorable scene in that movie for me. And every time I hear there's a tornado, uh, like, in real life, I go to YouTube because YouTube has everything, right? So I go to YouTube, and I try to find tornadoes that have some kind of action other than just a real far, like, panned out, zoomed out shot of, like, a tornado. I'm, I'm trying to find action shots, like people inside tornadoes. Like there is like a lot of clickbait out there, and it's real frustrating because it says like man caught in tornado. So I'm thinking there's a man who's in a tornado, and he's like has his camera, and he's like caught in the tornado. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. I know I'm not the smartest uh, smartest guy out there, but th this clickbait gets me every time. And I'm waiting to see cows fly, and it never happens. So all these YouTube videos are a little bit disappointing. Anyways, storms. I love looking at rain. Like, not just like drizzle, but like when it's really raining, where it makes the, it makes, it's, it's echoing off your roof. Anyone else like that? I love it. It's awesome. It's soothing sometimes. Sometimes you, you just lay in bed and you hear the rain. You're like, oh, this is relaxing. My kids love thunderstorms because there's always a chance of a power outage, right? So in 2020, there's going to be a thunderstorm. And, and my dad watches the weather like 24 7. Like, if you need to know the weather, talk to my dad. He's like, weather forecaster. Like, he, yeah, he knows weather everywhere. It's crazy. So, um, so my kids hear that there's going to be a thunderstorm for my dad. So they get their little flashlights and sleeping bags, and they're all excited. And then uh, all of a sudden, the power goes out. Boom. And in six-part harmony, all the kids, yay, right? Five seconds later, power comes back on. And in six-part harmony, ah. And I was like, great, 2020, now you want to rob this of them too? They can't have a proper power outage. So, I know. And then there's hail. Oh, man. Californians lose their mind when it hails, right? I know because I, I see it on Facebook all the time. Like, there's like, my feed is filled with everyone who is, who loves hail. I don't know. Like, they've never seen it before. And then their whole, like, everything is, everything is posted about hail. It's, it's, 
not hell like the plays, like hail from the sky. I talk real fast, so I don't, there might not be a distinction. But, but yeah, there's all kinds of storms. There's wind storms and there's rain storms. There's lightning storms and thunderstorms. There's hail storms, storm troopers. The list goes on and on. We know in the natural that we'll see storms, and in our spiritual life, we will definitely see storms. And here's why. Because storms are a necessary part of your growth and spiritual development. That's not very fun. I know. I'm sorry. That's not a very fun word. Let's turn to Luke 8, 22 to 26. One day Jesus says to his disciples, let's go to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake. So the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him saying, master, master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, who is this? He commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. I love this story. When I was a preschool teacher, uh, actually preschool teacher's aide, um, we used to do this, this, this story with the kids. We, we had like a, little, like a little rocking boat. Yvette, you could take notes if you want to do this. Um, they had a little rocking boat, right? And we'd tell the story about how it was like the boat was rocking, and then we had a fan that we'd blow on the kids, and that was the wind. And then we had a spray bottle with a mister, and we'd squirt the kids, right? Except I'm really like a big believer in the Bible and like not like dumbing it down, right? So, so I wanted to do, like give them like a real life storm. I wanted to get like a five gallon Home Depot bucket and do the ice bucket, like the ice water bucket challenge because they need to know what a storm is like. Rick's looking at me like, that's not, I know. <laughs> Apparently that's frowned upon, I don't know. Uh, so, so uh, but I really wanted them to know what storms are like. You know, sometimes as Christians, we can fall under the idea that because we are Christians, that we shouldn't face storms, that we're storm exempt. It's true that we are blessed. It's true that we're not cursed, but I've never read anywhere in my Bible that tells me that we'll be exempt from storms. In fact, I read the opposite. I read about how we will face troubles of many kind and how we we will face persecution. You know, one time I did think like this. I did buy the lie that because I'm a Christian and serving in ministry and I'm a pastor, that, uh, that I'm storm exempt. It was 2006, and my wife and I bought our first home. Enough said, right? We bought our first home. It was a 1,254 square foot house, three bedroom, two bath, $335,000. And we weren't, we had three jobs. I had two jobs. She had one job at a, at a preschool, actually. She was a preschool teacher as well. And, um, and then uh, Jamie Rea was born nine weeks early. Thanks, Ray Ray. Uh, and, then, um, and then my wife had to be indoors with Rhea for nine months because, um, because of RSV and, and, and her, her immune system wasn't developed all the way. And so the common cold could be fatal. So we lost some of our income. And then all of a sudden, we couldn't make our house payments anymore because they were $2,700 a month. And so we were in a big refinance. We were in a big battle with our mortgage company trying to refinance our loan. Finally get it refinanced after like a two-year battle. Finally get it refinanced. And then our payments go to like $1,900 a month. And then at this time, my wife wasn't able to work at the preschool, but she was able to start taking on daycare kids. This was after Rhea was uh, able to be around other kids. And, um, and so she had, she had daycare kids, and that was like half of our income. So we finally get to a place where we could afford our monthly mortgage payment, and then all of a sudden, my wife loses almost all our kids. Like, not like she lost them in the backyard and couldn't find them. Like, it was, she's a great teacher. She would never do that. Um, it, it was like, uh, like, there were a lot of, um, of the families were state workers, Remember, like, the Friday furlough thing? So, like, they lost their jobs or lost income, so they had to pull their kids out of preschool or out of daycare, and then that took half of our income. I remember getting angry with God, like, God, why me? I'm a pastor. I tithe. I'm at the church six nights out of the week. Like, I'm, I, I've given my life to ministry. And then we go through the list of why we should be storm exempt. Yeah, anyone else ever go through that before? So going through this whole list, thinking I should be storms, storm exempt. But the reality is that storms are a necessary part of our life for growth and spiritual development. There's a couple, po- uh, couple points that I want to point out about storms. Number one, storms are inevitable. 
Matthew 7, 24 and 27, we see in the story of the wise and foolish builder, uh, Jesus is talking. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it, because it had its foundation on the rock. Jesus doesn't say if the storms come. I read that verse a ton of times. I made sure it didn't say if in there at all. It says, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Jesus says, it will happen. It's going to happen. There will be storms. And just like I said a few minutes ago, there's all kinds of different storms in your life. There's going to be little storms, and there's going to be big storms. There's going to be storms that you create on your own. There's going to be storms that others create for you. And then there's going to be storms that just happen. 2020, even in nature, right? There is no place that's sunny all day, every day, 365 days out of, out of the year. Number two, storms will try to drown out the promises God spoke over your life. Verse 22, Jesus says, let us go over to the other side. Jesus told them that they were going to the other side. But the storm started to drown out everything Jesus said. A little over a year after I was saved, I felt called to the ministry. I felt called to being a youth pastor. And I remember I created a storm for myself and was not able to be a youth leader anymore. And I was crushed. I was devastated. I was in church and worship would start. And then I would start to hear, why even worship? You're not going to be a youth pastor anymore. Why even believe in God anymore? So I started to believe the lie. And then I stopped going to church and I started clubbing because that's what I did before I was a Christian. I would go clubbing. I know it's hard to believe. I'm sorry. There's a lot about my past that you should never know. I'm just kidding. But seriously. A few months after I stopped going to church, the worship pastor called me up. His name is Josh Combs. One of my really good friends to this day. He's actually the one who taught me how to play bass. He called me up. He said, bro, where you've been? I said, well, I'm not going to be a youth pastor anymore, so like, why should I even believe in God? And he's like, okay, that's unacceptable. I'm going to mentor you. I'm going to pick you up from your house every Tuesday. And so just to kind of give you perspective, like, he lived a two-minute walk from the church. And he would drive across town to pick me up, driving back to the church. We would come into the office. We'd pray together. We'd start reading scripture together. We would hold each other accountable and memorize scripture together. At one point, I had all of Romans 5 memorized, which is anything in Romans is real hard. So we'd go to lunch, and this was always like the, this was always like the non-fun part. I hope he's watching. Um, because him and his wife were on a diet, right? So I would get like one lemon cookie, and like, come on, really? <laughs> one lemon cookie. Um, I would get some celery. I'd get more celery than a cookie, which I don't know how that works out. Um, to this day, I hate celery. Ask my wife. Um, she tried to make me drink celery juice a couple months ago. That wasn't happening. So, uh, <laughs> um, so uh, then we, he would make sandwiches. Him and his wife would make sandwiches. And I know the first rule I learned, I learned in ministry that I preach all the time is never turn down free food, right? So, but he, they would make sandwiches with like ranch and like a, th- like a slice of turkey. It, it, it was awesome, but I was really mad about the one cookie thing. Like, why only one cookie? That's so messed up. That's like telling me to go to a buffet and not letting me be able to eat anything, right? So I don't know. I know it's probably way far. I don't know. My bad. But he would, out of his own pocket, buy sound and lighting magazines and special effects magazines, and he would teach me bass lessons on Tuesday, and he really invested in me, and he restored me into ministry. And even though the storm that I created for myself, God still had a solution for me that he pulled me out of my storm and allowed me to grab a hold of his promises over my life. The third thing, storms try to rob you of your rest. Verse 23, as they sailed, he fell asleep. He is Jesus. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him saying, master, master, we're going to drown. The storm caused the disciples to fear. The Bible says they were in danger. And here's the crazy part is most of them were fishermen. So they've been on rough waters before. 
but something was different about this storm. You know, I, I've been on rough waters one time. I went deep sea fishing with my father-in-law. He, he took me deep sea fishing, and it was really awesome, except it was like a rough day at sea. I mean, people are like casting the lines and then going this way and then going this way, and people are throwing up overboard. And I mean, it, it got so crazy. I, I actually managed to get a picture of my, of my father-in-law this day. It was really awesome. Can we show that picture real quick? There's my father-in-law uh, <laughs> going overboard. I mean, he, he landed with almost little splash. It was really great if he was in the Olympics. It was awesome. That little orange life preserve thing I threw out to him, he thanks me every day on a regular basis for saving his life, and as, as he should, actually. So you're welcome, Ron Dizzle. So this storm, this storm was rough, right? It was even rougher than my deep sea uh, fishing experience because, and I know, because I was having fun. I was fishing. I wasn't throwing up. I was catching a bunch of fish. It was really awesome. I saw my father-in-law get thrown off the boat. It was really awesome. Like, it was a great day for me, and there was no fear involved, even though there was a storm on the, on the ocean. But the disciples who were used to fishing and used to rough waters were afraid. I'm convinced that Jesus probably would have rested the whole way to the other side if they didn't wake him. Like, there's nothing more irritating than when your naps get interrupted. Parents, where are you at? Yeah, Sunday morning or sorry, Sunday afternoon naps are ordained by the Lord Himself. I'm telling you right now, this service is going to end. I'm probably going to end it a little bit early so then I can go nap. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to end the service. We're going to greet. We're going to pray. We're going to do all this stuff right, and then we're going to grab some food, and then we're going to go home. And I'm going to tell the kids, "Hey, it's rest time. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to jump around. You're not allowed to beat up your sister. You're not allowed to beat up your brother. You're not allowed to run around naked. You're not allowed to do this. all the stuff. A list of 20 stuff for them not to do to rest in their room, right? And to make it even sweeter, I say, you don't have to sleep. You just have to lay down and watch a movie, right? Like I try to make it even a little sweeter for them. But still, we will still get a knock on our door. And then immediately, irritation. Ugh, right? <laughs> I should. I should. I'd be, I'd be a bad parent. Um, worse than I am, actually. But, um, and then we get a knock, and they say something that really doesn't even need to be said at the moment. Leanna will come in. She'll knock. Who is it? Um, it's Leanna. Okay. Okay, Nanny, what do you want? Um, so, uh, Judah invited me to hang out and something, something, something. So, uh, th- we're like, wh- why? Why? Just wh- wh- text us. I don't know. Do something. Wait until we're up. Something. Rhea comes in, and when Rhea's excited, her face is like this. <laughs> this is her excited face. Rhea, we're going to Disneyland. <laughs> right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> She's so embarrassed right now. I love you. <laughs> Woo, it's rough being one of my kids. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so she'll knock on the door and say something like, Logan's mistreating the dogs or something. Like, I, I could see her face through my door. Logan's not watching the dogs. Like, they can't handle that on their own. They need me to, like, yell out the door. Logan comes in. Uh, yeah, um, Daddy, so this uh, Amazon package came, and I just, I'm letting you know, I put it right by your door. Okay, thanks, bro. Like, wh- why? Like, why? Like, you sp- what do you expect from me right now to get up from my nap and open an Amazon package so you can see what it is? Like, why? Why is this happening? So, uh, Gina will knock on our door. Who is it? It's Gina. Heck of bossy. Yes, Gina, what's wrong? <laughs> Logan will let me play video games. Okay, tell him to let you play or I will end his life. <laughs> so, the- <laughs> Don't act like I'm the only parent who's used those words before, huh? Whew, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because CPS might be watching, and we're all going to be in trouble. I'll take the fall. It's okay. Jackson knocks on the door, and he's so Mr. like everything has to be in order. Everything has to be exactly like mommy and daddy said, right? So uh, it, it'll be something like, um, daddy, yes, yeah, so uh, I was just wondering, um, Leia ate her Pop-Tart, but she left the wrapper on the formal dining table and did not throw it away. So um, should, should maybe you tell her to throw it away? Or, and I'm like, Jackson, just I'll deal with it later. And I can't get mad at him because Jackson literally is the sweetest boy in this whole world. Like there is no mean bone in his body. So I mean, he is so caring, so thoughtful for his sisters. Like 
he is so, so, so nice. So I can't even get mad at him. Leia. She knocks on the door. Hi. It's Leia Ariel. Just, um, I just, uh, uh, Anna, Elsa, just, um, um, um. I can't understand how much she's saying, but she's telling us a full story. Like, I'm tempted just to give her my phone and have her record it, and then I'll watch it later. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do love my kids. They're, they're really awesome. But because of the disciples' lack of faith, they robbed Jesus of his rest, and they robbed themselves of their own rest. Number four, storms give us an opportunity to exercise our authority. Verse 24, the disciples went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. The word rebuked is the same word that Jesus used when he rebuked demons and he rebuked the the fever in Peter's mother-in-law. That word rebuke means to express severe disapproval in, to forbid. So Jesus spoke to the storm with the same authority that he used to speak to demons and sickness. In Mark, Jesus not only rebuked the winds and the waves, but he told them to sit down and shut up. Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. See, too many times as Christians, we get caught up in woe is me moments when we have storms instead of telling our storms to sit down and shut up. Husbands, let me just warn you, your wife is not a storm. You are never allowed to tell your wife to sit down and shut up. That is because if that happens, you'll be sleeping on a corner of a roof. So uh, that's not fun. That's not comfortable at all. I don't know from experience. I'm just imagining. Number five, storms will reveal the condition of your foundation. Matthew 7, 25, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. You know, going through storms will really reveal the condition of your foundation. Like, where do you go when storms happen in your life? I'm 100% convinced that in times of uncertainty and chaos, you will return to places that are familiar to you. Just as I said earlier, when I started doubting the call of God on my life, I returned to what? Clubbing, because that was more familiar to me than the presence of God and the teachings of Christ. In times of uncertainty and chaos, you will return to places that are familiar to you. So if you're familiar with the presence of God and the word of God, then in times of chaos, you will return there. So where do we go when we are hit with adversity or with pain or betrayal or hurt and chaos? Do you remind yourself of God's promises? Are you getting into his presence? Are you putting into practice the things that Jesus taught us? Are you recalling scripture or seeking the Lord? You know, I wonder how much unnecessary stress and anxiety we carry by not going to God first and putting Jesus' teaching into practice. One of the things that I tend to call out in this generation, and and I speak to the youth about this also, um, I get really irritated when I hear the youth say, my anxiety. My anxiety is acting up, or my anxiety is really bothering me. Because I don't like taking ownership of something that Christ defeated on the cross. Is anxiety a real thing? Yes, it is. Does the Bible give us instruction on on anxiety? Yes, it does. Does the Holy Spirit help lead us and guide us to a place where we can overcome that? Yes, absolutely. Number six, storms give you a new perspective of Jesus. Verse 25, in fear and amazement, they asked one another, who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. It's not God's desire for you to be in a storm your whole life. God has a solution for every single storm that you will ever go through or that you've ever been in or are currently going through. And the cool thing is, when you get through that storm, you'll be able to look back and have a new perspective of Jesus. You know, looking back at when we lost our home, it was, it was a really crazy situation how, you know, and, and, and I knew it was God working. It was totally God. 
but we, we had to refinance and we lost all of our daycare kids. We talked to her parents. Her parents were like, well, we're in the market to buy a second home because at that point in time, houses were ridiculously cheap. So they bought a second home and they moved into that home. A week later, we moved into the home that my wife grew up in. And a week after that, my mom passed away unexpectedly. And my dad came and lived with us that night. And had we been in our old house, there was no way that we could have accommodated him staying with us because there's only 1,200 square feet and we had three kids at the time. And so looking back, when you're in the storm, you can go off your checklist of why you shouldn't be going through stuff. But really, you should remind yourself that even when you're going through stuff, God is working stuff in the background that you don't even see to pull you out of the storm. And one day you're going to look back and say, that was totally God. I thought it was a storm. I thought it was all bad. But God turned this around for my good. And the story of the house keeps going on. I mean, my in-laws were able to sell that house that they were in and made a whole bunch of money off that house. And then now they're in Montana and retired and they paid for their house and the, the house out there. We were able to move into Elk Grove, which is a blessing for us because now we don't have to commute from Greenback and 80. I don't know about you guys, but the 99 is one of the worst freeways in all of America. Actually, a few years ago was rated the worst freeway in all of America. There were more deaths per mile on that freeway than any other freeway in America. So even to this day, we can still look back and see how God was working things out through what I thought was a storm and God was maybe punishing me because of something. I don't, I don't know. But it was because of that storm that we were able to be in the position that we're in now. And because of that, we're able to look at Jesus with new eyes and a new perspective. You know, I love my wife with every fiber of my being. She absolutely amazes me and she continues to amaze me. This morning in worship, like, I've heard her sing these songs. Well, not the first song, because that's this is only the second time doing it. But I've heard her sing um, The Great I Am a million times. And yet this morning, she hit notes that I've never heard her hit before. It's like, wow, she is amazing. And it's not that she's trying to amaze me. It's her being who she is, as God created her to be, is amazing. Does that make sense? If you're going through a storm, I want to encourage you for a few moments. Is that okay? You will get through this storm. You will get through this storm. You're going to be okay. This storm is not going to last forever. God is going to pull you through, and he's going to be everything that you need him to be. Let's just stand to our feet for a moment, um, and, and, and we're going to close our eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to list off a bunch of stuff. And if, if that relates to you or if you're like, man, I need that or I'm struggling with that, if it, if it resonates within you, I just want you to lift your hands up. One hand, two hands, I don't care. But I really believe God's going to do something special this morning. So you guys close your eyes. God has a plan to heal you when you're hurt and brokenhearted. God has a plan to comfort you when you mourn. God has a plan to hold you when you're lonely. God has a plan to financially prosper you when your finances need help. God has a plan to give you strength when you feel weak. He has a plan to give you joy when you feel depressed. He has a plan to give you peace when you feel unrest. He has a plan to be your calm when you feel anxious. He has a plan to break fear when fear tries to grip you. He has a plan to give you hope when you're hopeless. He has a plan to give you a purpose when you feel purposeless. He has a plan to encourage you when you need encouragement. He has a plan to lead you when you feel lost. He has a plan to give you the Holy Spirit when you need power. He has a plan to let you operate in the supernatural when you feel like you want to do more with your life. He has a, bl he has a plan to bless your children when they're walking with the Lord, and he has a plan to bless your children when they aren't walking with the Lord. Lord, we thank you that you've given us the ability to have the mind of Christ. 
Will you help us to think and respond how Jesus would when these storms come? Lord, will you give us discernment on when to tell storms to sit down and shut up and when to simply rest in your presence? Lord, I pray that we would always turn to you because you have a solution for every storm in our life. In Jesus' name.
God, we are taking ground for you. We are furthering your kingdom. We are enlarging our territory, oh God. Jesus, 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 we're so thankful for your work on the cross. Because of the victory of the cross, we can have a victorious life. So we thank you, we give you praise this morning, God. We give you praise this morning. Pastor Ron, can I have you come close us in prayer? It, it, it's such a treat to have uh, Pastor Ron Hughes. This is Pastor Andrew's dad. Uh, it's such a treat to have you here with us. And, yeah. and I know you can't always make it, but when you're here, it's such a treat. And, and, and it's such an honor to, to have you here. And if you, would, if you wouldn't mind closing us in prayer this morning, thank you so much. Father, we're so thankful for your word today. We thank you that you are the God who gets us out, gets us through, and gets us there. You're a victorious God. We thank you for the cross of Jesus and we glory in your cross today because that is the source of our victory. It's the means of our victory through what you took care of there on our behalf. And God, I pray for every person here today that has perhaps felt like they have stumbled their way through life this past week. Those that have tripped and fallen, those who have perhaps gotten off track a little bit, that you would take them by the hand right now and that, God, you would lead them forth and you would give them victory, that this week would be a, victim, a, 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 a week of victory, that Monday morning they would wake up and experience your presence and your power and your victory, Father God. Oh, I know it's what you want to do for your children. Again, we thank you for your word of encouragement and uplifting today. You are the God, the God who gets us through. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Ron. Thank you guys so much for, for being here this morning. Uh, feel free. We're going to open the doors. And uh, feel free to fellowship in the parking lot. Uh, we're going to disinfect the building and all that good stuff. But um, don't just rush off. we got a little bit of time uh, you know, before you get really hungry for lunch. Uh, you guys came to the second service. So you guys had a good breakfast already. So fellowship, get to know someone outside, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys soon.